What is going on my graphic design friends? This is episode number seven on my new professional logo design series and I'm glad everybody's liking it so far and I just want to say that this series is really geared towards professional logo designs and professional doesn't have to mean over the top but professional meaning professional ways of dealing with the project and professional ways of actually building the logo and things that you need to adhere to certain types of rules. That's what this whole series is really here to teach you because anybody could teach you anything with a pen tool, anything with text boxes. This is going to go more in depth. And speaking about in depth, I have an extended version of not only this tutorial right here, but every tutorial in this series, every logo, there has been a whole process to get to this final result. And that's what this whole course is going to be about. You can find out more information about it on my website or in the description below. Okay, so on the screen are two different logos. What's going on here, Steve? The top logo is the logo that we're going to be building today because that is the most current version of this logo. But the bottom logo is what we actually initially designed for the client. So when the extended version information came up and you saw this flash across the screen, SSG, this was the original logo that we designed for this client. Uh, due to trademark uh, issues that they didn't want to have in the future, they decided to change their name. Although they were a few years into their business, they figured out legal wise how to do it the correct way. And we changed their name basically using the same format with the same type of an idea. So SSG Advisors, Regulatory Compliance Services, uh, we had uh, these kind of um, intricate, you know, um, modern type techie uh, or, you know, communications type of symbols on the left. Um, and then we ended up using the same font up here. Um, and doing those same symbols along the A. Now, the font over here is uh, Bank Gothic, and the font right here is Myriad Pro, which I use in a lot of my uh, tutorials because you're basically using a complex font and then you're using a simple font. Very simple colors. We got uh, we got navy blue and we got uh, a darker version of a gray. And you can see the subtle differences in this symbol right here. Um, and basically, I'm going to talk about... Uh, uh, certain ways I, I change the font around a little bit, uh, you know, stuff about kerning. Uh, it's a very well balanced logo. It still looks great in black and white, as you can uh, you can see here. And um, if you have any comments about it, leave it in the in the comment section below. If not, let's get into Adobe Illustrator CC 2014 and show you real quick how to build this easy logo. Okay, so like I say in all the videos, I am using Adobe Illustrator CC 2014, but you'll be able to follow along in basically any other version of Adobe Illustrator. So if you have CS, CS2, CS3, 4, you're going to be fine. Uh, in my extended course, uh, my logo design bootcamp course, you're going to be able to download this vector logo um, and follow along side by side. Now at the top, I did include the colors that are going to be a part of this logo. So you can go ahead, look up those numbers, then add them into your swatches very quickly. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to come up to the type tool or hit T on our keyboard as a keyboard command shortcut and we're going to click and we're going to type out the word Asgard all in caps and we're going to hit escape. We are now going to come up to change our font to Bank Gothic. Now I have everything running across the top but if you do not see that you can come up to window type character or command T and you will see it will bring up on your on the right somewhere. So I'm going to come up into here and I'm going to type out Bank Gothic and I believe I'm using the medium version here and I'm going to scale this up. Okay. What you now want to do is you want to come into here and you want to go to type create outlines and you either want to right click and go to ungroup or you can find it here under object ungroup and I believe that's shift command G. So you definitely want to know these keyboard command shortcuts because you don't always want to be moving around clicking. I tell I talk about this in every video. I even had a video specifically about keyboard command shortcuts. So um, just really focus on that because you can design without actually you know slowing down you can kind of like as an idea comes to your head you can do it on the screen without looking away which is pretty cool so um what i now want to do is i want to move that a out of the way because we are going to be changing that around just very slightly um i'm going to pretty much get the same scale that i had so what i want to do here is i want to take all these letters and go to command g or object group all right, that's going to group them back. So if I select this, you're going to see the A is no longer a part of that group as we determined that a few seconds ago. And I'm just going to come up on top of here. I'm going to scale this down a little bit. Um, 
I don't know if I said this already, but I am working on eight and a half by 11 canvas, um, just so you can get the kind of scale that I'm, I'm going for right here. Uh, what I now want to do is I want to, again, click uh, the letter T on my keyboard and we're going to click and we're going to type out regulatory compliance services. We're going to hit escape. Now, a lot of you might be thinking, okay, oh, why didn't you leave the font, uh, the same bank Gothic font for the actual, um, you know, the rest of the company name or what they actually do. And the reason I did not do that is because this font bank Gothic is beautiful and it does have a lighter version. Uh, but it is a little bit of a complicated font. So I like to always go with like a serif type font. And these are this well similar. Uh, these are not serifs, but um, it's kind of a little bit funky of a font. Um, and I like to go with a very straightforward, uh, normal, basic font, I guess you could say, uh, in every logo that I do. So I like to kind of incorporate uh, two fonts max. Uh, but, you know, a tagline sometimes can be in another font. But. I guess uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I actually did it, I think, in episode six. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to come up to here. I'm going to go to Myriad Pro. I believe that was just regular. And we can do a couple things. We can either scale this up, or what I might do is I might come into my character and add some tracking. Okay, just a little bit. Got to push it out. And I'm going to now scale it up anyway. So hold shift while you do this. And kind of, you see how as I'm moving it up, I have that those two arrows that are on a diagonal. And I got that little thing in the middle. That little thing in the middle is really telling me where the edge of this text box is. So we're pretty much going to line that up with the edge of the D. So everything lines up pretty nicey nice there. Um, same thing with this R. We're going to boom, line it up. So I'm not sure if you ever knew that before with those with that little line in the middle of the two arrows. So if you just learn that in this tutorial and that's all you learn, it's one more thing that you can take into your next project. So we're going to pull this down a little bit and now, wow, we're already up to the A. So what we're going to do is um, I wanted it to look obviously like the A was still similar to the same font. Um, I obviously probably could have made this a little bit thinner over here or maybe this to kind of jive a little bit better. Um, but this is what the client wanted. They wanted the stuff a little bit thicker. They wanted... Um, they wanted it to look a little bit different. They were happy with this one uh, version um, where I showed it to them on an angle. Uh, so, you know what? They're happy. I'm happy. Um, so what we can do here is um, you can take hit A on your keyboard and, and grab these points. And let's see what happens if we move these over. All right. That's going to look funky. All right. So what we're probably. Yeah. Very simply, what I probably did here because I can't really remember off the top of my head is uh, you want to come up into your rectangle tool or hit M on the keyboard and we're going to draw a rectangle that goes pretty much from the top of the S to the bottom of the R. This is basically shapes that we're going to make for this. Okay. We are now going to go to, uh, we're going to go to command C. We're going to hit command C and then command F. So what I just did was I just pasted a copy of it on top of itself. So if I move this away, Say I fill it with the red for now, you're going to see it's on top of the black. You see what's going on here? So I'm going to back up, back up, back up, and now it's, again, it's right on top of itself. What I now want to do is I want to hit A on my keyboard, and I want to click on the line segment right there. You see how that little box to the bottom right of the arrow lights up? That means you're clicking on the line segment. You want to click here. Oh, excuse me. Click here. All right, and you're going to see two open yellow uh, white boxes. Now you're going to click and hold down. It's going to turn black. Hold the shift on your keyboard. I know it's a lot, but if you just slow down and listen to every little step, you'll get it. And we're just going to pull this over. Okay. Cool. And it's going to thin that out just a little bit, which is fine. All right. And what we're now going to do is we're going to come into the rectangle again, or we could just copy one of these. Uh, and we're going to draw a rectangle right over here. And we're going to zoom in, refine this a little bit. I'm actually liking how um, thick this is compared to this. So uh, what I now want to do is if you zoom in, you're going to see that there's a problem here. We're going to click on this end point right here, and we're going to pull it over. But you always want your hand by the shift button because that's what's going to keep things in, pro in proportion. And I'm going to pull that over. Let's see that corner is good right there. Okay. What I now want to do is, because um, these are one, to, these are three separate shapes, so it's really not reading it as one shape. You want to select all three of these, come into your Pathfinder, and go to Unite, which is the top left 
option. And now if I fill this with a color, you're going to see it's one shape. Pretty cool, right? All right. So um, I like the the distance between here. Everything feels pretty right. I'm now actually going to delete that A because we really didn't need the A. Um, but now what we're going to do is, okay, if you, if you see what's going on here, these are all perfect circles. And I'm going to show you a way to do this where you're not going to get exactly perfect circles, but then we can go over it and then make our own perfect circles. The uh, whole purpose of what I'm going to show you is just to show you another tool, which is the blend tool, blend, B-L-E-N-D, excuse me. And what you want to do is come into your ellipse tool first. Okay. We are going to make an ellipse. So we're going to click, hold down, shift, and then we're going to scale this a little bit. You know, we can even scale this up a lot. Okay. And just leave it black for right now. What we're now going to do is we're going to go to option. We're going to click this. We're going to hold shift. So we're now holding option shift. We're going to scale, uh, push this over. We're now going to take this object and we're going to scale it up to the center point. So you can either do click this corner point, hold shift and option, and it's going to scale it up through the center point. Or you can come into scale, which is S on your keyboard. You're going to click. Okay, excuse me. You're going to double click the tool over here. And we're just going to go, uh, we're going to make this like, uh, Let's see, 120. We're going to go to 150. See what that does. Okay, cool. Uh, and we're going to hit OK. Now what we're going to do is, like I said, I'm going to show you the blend tool. And what we're going to do is we're going to come up into here. And you're going to see this little tool right here. Hit W on your keyboard, keyboard command shortcut. And we're going to click and we're going to double click it. And we're going to make sure the spacing is a set to specified steps. And we're going to hit three. And our orientation, we are going to uh, align it to the path, and we're going to hit OK. And we're now going to click this right here, and we're going to literally just click this circle, and you're going to see it made three steps in between, but you're going to see it goes from smaller to larger. Pretty cool, right? What we're now going to do is we're going to go to Option, Click. We're going to shift that over. We're going to come up into our Reflect tool, and we're going to click and push to the right, while holding shift on our keyboard. So it just basically flipped it over. And I'm now gonna move this directly on top of this. I'm just gonna pull all these over, okay? Because this is based really on an effect, what you have to do is now you have to select all of these, come up to object, expand, and it's gonna create all actual circles for all of these, all right? But if you remember, I did overlap the two in the middle, so I'm gonna have to hit A on my keyboard, Click right here and delete one of them. So now, if you see I move it, there's just one left. We are going to actually, what I want to do is I want to just nudge these over by eye. So I'm going to knock this over twice, three times, one, two, three, four. Okay, cool. All right, so that's pretty much where I want it to be. Um, I'm now going to select all these and I'm going to, you're going, or you're going to uh, fill them all in with one color and then starting with the First one, we're going to select that, hold shift, select this one, this one, and this one, every other one. And we're going to now hit the eyedropper, and we're going to select that gray color that we put in our swatches, or you put in your swatches earlier. Okay, so now we have this. What I now want to do is I want to select this entire thing, and I want to go to Command G, and I'm going to open up my brushes palette. If you do not have it, you're going to go to Window Brushes. And we are going to literally click this entire thing and we're going to drag it into our brushes and we are going to make a new art brush. We are now going to make sure the direction of that art brush is going from left to right and that everything scales proportionately and we're going to now hit OK. What you are now going to do is you're very simply going to come back up to the ellipse tool and we're going to make an ellipse. All right, we're going to hold shift while we're doing this. And we are going to fill this with black for right now, and I'll show you why in a second. All right. We're now going to hit A on our keyboard and go to the direct selection, and we're going to literally select the bottom half of this because we're going to delete this, and we're going to delete this right here. Okay, and we're going to hit delete. Just delete once because if you hit delete again, the whole thing's going to disappear. What you now want to do is you want to select this all, and you want to come back in your brushes and click that brush that you made, the art brush. All right, and we're going to make sure that we take our fill and we turn it to none. And now that we're in here, 
we are going to come in and jump double click the art brush and you can mess around with some of the options in here um, but for some reason I cannot seem to get a actual perfect circle on here but what we could do is and now you want to hit OK on that um, what we could do is we could always mess around and replace these later on um, so what we're gonna do is we're going to select this entire thing we're gonna come up to object expand appearance so now again we have all these circles and literally we're just going to go to command C copy and we're gonna to go to com command F so we just paste it in front and now we're going to scale this down by holding shift and option okay and we're gonna move it down okay again command C command F paste in front shift and option scale it down okay lastly we're going to click this and go to option we're just gonna bring it right into the middle okay all right so if you want them to be perfectly circular and let me know in the comments if you know another way because I honestly do not know another way of doing that um, is we can literally go to command C and command V and you can start to do this manually I mean it's what what it's gonna take less than two minutes to do this um, but for right now I'm gonna leave the effect that we had because I basically just told you how you're able to do it yourself and we're gonna select this whole thing where you go to command G and now we're gonna bring it up here we're going to hover around this corner you're gonna see these two arrows pop up we're going to rotate it and you're gonna see this blue line kind of hugs the red angle the the red diagonal and we're now going to go to shift and option and scale it down and I wanted to make sure these kind of just met up with the edge I believe that's how I did it on my original so you can see my original there in different positions they actually go up like that because I did this whole thing manually um, but I'm just showing you basically another way to do this um, obviously the actual circles look a lot more cleaner than this looks a little bit muddy okay and very simply simply with this logo um, I just filled it with that blue all right I didn't do any type, type of gradation in here and with this I very simply used that gray so yes this logo may have taken you know 10 or so minutes to actually build but the truth of the matter is that these logos take hours the projects they really uh, do take a long time to go through um, and in my extended course I'll talk a lot more in depth about this specific project and you're also going to get every other project and all types of stuff about how to deal with clients pricing you know researching for projects and, and stuff like that so that is concludes this logo in Adobe Illustrator CC 2014 all right, so thanks again for checking out another professional logo design video. In the comments below, let me know what you learned in this video or if you just want to say hi. Uh, I always answer every single comment in every video eventually, um, so definitely don't miss that opportunity. Uh, subscribe to my channel, definitely, uh, so you don't miss any of the awesome content coming out. I am putting videos out uh, every week or every other week now. Uh, and definitely, if you're looking to really get to the next level with this stuff, you want to check out my extended course, uh, which is not only extensions of all these videos in this playlist, but there's a bunch of other videos that are going to really show you the whole entire process from dealing with clients to saving your files the correct way and getting them to your clients uh, the correct way and making them happy. So the goal is, in most cases, 9 out of 10 people watching this right now, they're trying to make money building uh, logos or selling logos. So um, that's going to gear you. Um, and basically teach you my own experience through the last almost decade. So uh, definitely click the screen for that or in the description below or on my blog, graphicdesignertips.com. And I will see you all for the next professional logo design video. I hope you have a wonderful night. Peace.